Friday's devotions found in the Upper Room Discipline, written by Kath Kimberly Orr. Our scripture reading is Joshua 3, 10 to 17. Joshua said, By this you shall know that among you is the living God, who without fail will drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hevites, the Perizzites, Gigashites, Amorites, and the Jebusites. The Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth is going to pass before you into the Jordan. So now select twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And when the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, rest in the water of the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan flowing from above shall be cut off, and they shall stand in a single heap. And when the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all of its banks throughout the time of harvest. So when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan and the feet of the priests bearing the water, Ark were dipped in the edge of the water, the waters flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarathan, while those flowing toward the Sea of the Arab Arba, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. And then the people crossed over opposite Jericho. While all of Israel was crossing over on dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, while it's apparent that the intent of today's reading is to recall the exodus through the Red Sea, the attention-grabbing headline of the Jordan River crossing is Joshua's pronouncement, By this you shall know that you among you is the living God. Not only is Yahweh fulfilling covenant obligations by bringing the people called Israel into the long-promised land, but a physical representation of God's word and presence is walking ahead of them in the priesthood and the ark. This embodied word is recreating and renewing a weary and desperate people as they ramble yet across yet another miraculously dry passageway. From yesterday's reading, we remember the call to draw near and hear the words of the house of the Lord, your God. And what are these words? That God is awake and alive and active, breathing new life into God's covenant people. As God walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, so God walked with the people during harvest season into a land flowing with milk and honey. Further, the genitive, your God, emphasizes God's loyal relationship with a people who have to, had to sojourn in the wilderness for 40 years to be purified and prepared for living in the land of the, up ahead of them. This example of God's enduring presence among a less than faithful people should offer us hope. Contrary to how we may feel or what circumstances may imply, the fact is that Yahweh remains committed to God's creational covenant with humanity. Thankfully, our foundation does not rest on shifting sands. As Jesus insists, everyone that hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Let us pray. Living God, you give us the words of life, and even when life is intolerable and we are tempted to abandon all faith and to flee, your constancy brings us hope and contentment. Amen. <laughs>